Hey, what's going on? It's uh, Michael Lamp for Helix Real Reviews. Once again, I am back, back in the uh, captain's chair, ready to do another review for you. Um, this week, we're going to be talking about End of Watch. Now, I know it's 2013. This movie came out last year, for Christ's sake. But you know what? I figure um might as well just revisit this bad boy because it kind of got glossed over during Oscar time. And this was actually one of my favorite movies of last year. Um, I'm a big cop movie person. Well, not really. Not uh, As a genre, it sucks. I think like any genre, when it tries to mold into those, you know, into whatever the genre is about, it's not that good. But occasionally a movie will come across, uh, will come along every once in a while that will, you know, bring it up, no bring it up a notch. So I'm going to talk about End of Watch, and uh, this is, you know, we're already into February of 2013, so like I said, it's a little old, it's probably almost on Blu-ray now, so, and if it is in any theater that you know, I think you should go and try and check it out before it leaves it. You know, just just do it, alright? You should just do it, because I think it's that good. Um, so I'm going to start talking about the found footage angle, for one thing, the, you know fucking garbage pail of a genre that's been created out of uh this bs which is the found footage angle you know it all started with the blair witch project back in what was the, what was that 99 97 or something like that and i'll be honest i i actually revisited blair witch i think when it was on tv i think maybe two years ago i was just alone you know just wallowing my in my self-sorrow no I wasn't it was it was a nice day actually it was a nice sunny day I was on the second floor of a house I think I was just sitting in my room just hanging out it came on some station maybe showcase or one of those shows and it scared the bejesus out of me Blair Witch Project 99 and I remember everyone hating on that movie back in the day because it was probably the first found footage movie that at least definitely made it mainstream to do found footage. And you know what's weird about that is that they did that and then found footage didn't come along for many, many years after that. Like, I don't even remember the... I feel like there was just this gap between Blair Witch Project and uh, Cloverfield. Cloverfield was also awesome. See, here's the thing. Blair Witch, Blair Witch still scared the bejesus out of me and I was... 13 years older than the first time I saw it and and then Cloverfield came along I don't remember when that was I think it was 07 08 nah it was yeah it was probably 08 something like that and I thought Cloverfield was spectacular as well you know it wasn't perfect there were sh there was shit wrong with that one too but as an overall piece of entertainment I thought it was pretty decent um so yeah why did I go off on that tangent again? Uh, so we're coming back to end of watch. Now I've been uh, I've been, saw a couple interviews with the director David Ayer, who's just a regular white guy, is bald as well. I assume when you see Jake Gyllenhaal in the posters or in the trailer, oh shit, I haven't played the trailer yet. All right, here's the trailer right now. I am police officer two, Brian Taylor. This is my partner. Officer Zavala. I'm in my chonies. I know, dude. Come on, come on. I'm in my chonies. No, 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 no. Come on, man. We were basic patrol here in Newton. One of the toughest divisions in the LAPD. Take pride in what you do, you guys. Yes, sir. I got him. I got him. Try to run. Try to run. Pit him, man. Pit him. Pit him. You know, I see you guys out here being good little company, man. It's all fun and games. You get to run and jump and fight and shoot. I'm down with that. Watch your six. Everybody here is family. You know I love you, man. I would lay down my life for you, dude. Hey, partner, what's up? I want to have a daughter, man. That'd be so cool. Just don't let her date cops. She's not dating anyone. Okay. Ever. <laughs> 105 North Avenue, 52. Third Sanctuary 13, Roger. What are we looking for again? Dope money and guns. Hablas inglés o español? Good! You good, partner? I'm good. What? You got more bling than the old lady's wedding ring. That guy is into something. You're not a detective. Follow me into the house. Uh, 
Oh my god. Be careful. You just tugged on the tail of the snake. It's gonna turn around and bite you back. You think I know what we're rolling up on? Every day I feel the heat in the city. Like the Put your hands over your head, get up! Cartels are operating here. They operate by a different set of rules. So why do they call you Big Evil? Because my evil's big. You're my brother. If anything happened to you, I would take care of your kids. Word is, we gotta hit on y'all, man. Y'all been greenlit. We're cops. Everybody wants to kill us. Whoa, 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 whoa! 13 X-ray 13, suspect running on foot. Look at me. We're shooting our way out of here, bro. Okay. On three, dude. You're gonna empty your mag and run. One, two, three! Damn, that's a good trailer. I'm such full of shit because every time I say that and I, I like I don't even watch the trailer with you guys. I just put it in post just so you can kind of remember what the movie was about and you can kind of get back into it. So I'm talking out of my ass when I say it was a nice trailer because I haven't watched it in many weeks. But anyway, um, so yeah, as you can tell, Jake Gyllenhaal, bald head in this movie, you know, going back to the Jarhead days. Jarhead's a good movie too. Good Jake Gyllenhaal movie. And yeah, so where was I going? David Ayer. In an interview he talked about with this movie, he said that he wanted to do the found footage initially because he found when he was interviewing a lot of L.A. cops, um, he knows that a lot of cops put stuff on video nowadays, whether it's takedowns, arrests, what have you. I'm not really sure what the reason he said for it was. I don't know if it was a legal reason to kind of protect themselves in case, you know, cops get into issues, legal issues with, you know, uh, aggressive arrests or what have you. But he thought the footage was so compelling that he should just make an entire movie dedicated, you know, sort of in in that vein to kind of show off what L.A. cops, you know, in particular go through. It's I feel like what goes through what goes on in End of Watch happens probably to a lot of cops in a lot of big cities. But it definitely felt very specific to L.A. as well, you know, with the whole Latin uh, with the whole Latin angle, which brings me up to the point they just announced recently that California white people are now a minority compared and minorities are now the majority. And I don't know if it's specific. Obviously, the Latin population has grown by leaps and bounds in that state, but I don't know if it's specifically higher than white people or if it's just all minorities. I think it's just all minorities. But Latin people coming up, man. Coming up in California especially in LA and if you watch end of watch you know which tries to pay homage to what's actually going on in south central uh you definitely get a feel of that which is great um you know the partnership the part okay so what makes this movie different than most movies is it the fact that cops are in it no is it the fact that there's car chases and gun battles no is it the fact that these are partners that get along? No, actually. Most cop movies have this on some level. Brett Ratner is a freaking billionaire now because of that stupid bullshit. Actually, I like I like those first two movies, Rush Hour. They were great. But yeah, this is pretty much a Rush Hour with a white guy and a Mexican instead of an Asian guy and a black guy. And um, yeah, uh, the partnership... In this movie, like, the real friendship that seems to go on in this movie is spectacular. And it's weird to kind of focus on something so specific in a performance. Like, especially in an action movie. You don't think... It's kind of like when you think of Iron Man. You don't think of the action scenes. You think of Robert Downey Jr. walking through and all the amazing scenes and lines and quips that he has, you know... He made Tony Stark more prevalent in that movie than Iron Man himself. You know, it's always, if you go to see Superman or Batman, you think of Batman. What did Batman do in that movie? What did Superman? But in Iron Man, it's about Tony Stark more so than Iron Man. And with End of Watch, it's like that too. It's not about the cops and the plot itself. 
what really stands out, you know, and I, I hate to jump on the bandwagon because everyone's saying this bullshit, but it's true. It's the friendship that they portray in that movie in um, End of Watch, Jake Gyllenhaal and Michael Pena, phenomenal. And I don't, you know, and a lot of people say this too, I don't really remember the last time I saw two actors act like they knew each other so well. And it's crazy because there's a lot of great um, interviews that they've done about this. And in the beginning, they actually did not get along. Like before production started, they hated each other. And they were getting into fights, you know, during weapons training and all that sort of stuff. And then uh, I remember seeing an interview with Jake Gyllenhaal talking about this. And he said, just somewhere along the line, we kind of, you know, we got, had each other's backs. And then from that point on, you have the movie that you have now. Um, and because of that, I, I think it's fair to say, like, what's... I, I pose this question to you, audience... What is the definitive cop movie of this decade? Nair. Sorry, not Nair. Nay, I say the century. Because we're already out of the 2000 to 2010 decade. And now we're into the next decade. But in the last 13 years, what's been the best cop movie that you've ever seen? Hmm? What is the definitive cop movie? For me, it's this one. I can't think of a more definitive like I can't think of a movie where I went and I com where I went in and I completely understood what it means to be a cop. Now, outside of of course the greatest television show in the world, The Wire. If you haven't seen that yet, I don't, you know, I'm one of those douchebags that'll yell at you for not seeing it. I'm one of those people. I'm worse than a Lost fan. I've never watched Lost. I never gave into that uh peer pressure. But The Wire you have to give into. You'll learn stuff about the world by watching The Wire. That's what I think defines it more than anything else. Um, and I feel, in a, you know, this uh, end of watch is kind of like The Wire LA edition almost, you know. If it didn't have, if it had been shot traditionally, you know, on film cameras and all that, it probably would have that would have been almost exactly what it is, you know, just mainly focusing on the police. Cause of course the wire kind of went all over the place and went into the political mayor and all that. Anyway, what, enough about the wire. Um, so yeah, this could be the Serpico of the two thousands. And I want to hit home because not a lot of people have seen this movie. I know it because I've talked to a lot of people and you know, it's just not reaching out there and it really should have, and it didn't get Oscar, buzz and i think you know at least performance wise it should have so yeah and you know one of the great ways this movie plays to the realism of what it's like to be in south central is you know the way they portray they portray the mexicans you know mexicans play a big role in um you know the whole way this story kind of unfolds it's about cartels coming into the neighborhoods of south central la which, you know, South Central, it's it's bad news down there, but it's not probably as bad as we all make it out to be. I don't think it's the Inglewood and Compton and everything that we imagine from the early 90s during the L.A. riots and all that sort of stuff. From what I've heard from a lot of people, it's kind of, it's kind of simmered over the past couple of decades, which, of course, is great. And this movie is about a force coming back into that neighborhood to kind of fuck everything back up, you know, a cartel moving in and moving their own drugs and all that bad news. So, yeah, I think from that aspect, the way it tackles Mexican lifestyles and shows, you know, the bad side with the cartels, but also the window that Michael Pena's character gives into, and I'm actually familiar with this side, um, you know, the Mexican families that exist in south central la and just what that culture is all about and the loyalty and the fun these people have and i've definitely been to a couple of quinceaneras myself i totally butchered that word in spanish i'm sorry i don't speak spanish i just don't whoever hears that and gets mad you're gonna have to deal with that i don't speak it but um yeah so that's kind of cool and that brings me to a casting issue i actually had with this movie I think everyone is great in this movie. I think 
it was perfectly casted. I like Frank Grillo, who, uh, you know, he was in The Grey. I don't know if you've seen that. Another top movie for me this year. A surprising movie, too. I wasn't expecting to like that movie half as much as what I did. But it's great. And uh, Frank Grillo plays, you know, the sergeant of uh, the Night Watch division of the L.A. PD that work in this particular neighborhood of South Central. I forget what they name the neighborhood, or even if they do give it a name. They probably do. Um, but, yeah, he's great. Michael Pena, obviously, Jake Gyllenhaal. Jake Gyllenhaal can't, hasn't met a role he didn't fucking just destroy. Well, I won't say destroy, but he's just good. Whatever he does, he's going to be good. You're not going to be like, oh, Jake sucked. No, you'd be like, Jake rocked. You always say that at the end of a Jake Gyllenhaal movie. Although I haven't seen Prince of Persia. That might be the one exception. But, so, uh, Natalie Martinez, who plays uh, Michael Pina's wife. She's just, she's cute. I just like, I just like looking at her face. And there's something about pregnant women. You know, they're just adorable. Like, you're just, you just want to grab their nose. You're like, oh, get out of here, you. Um, obviously, she plays a pregnant uh, lady in this movie, so that's why I said that. But anyway, and then I get down to Anna Kendrick. I understand the world seems to have fallen in love with her recently. You know, Up in the Air was probably her big breakout movie. She's in the... I hear that she's even in the Twilight movies. She's in... Um, what was another... She's in 50-50. I liked her in that. But here, no. This is just... There's a rawness to this movie that maybe she was supposed to bring a softness to. And I just... She was a misfire for me. Um, maybe it's because Jake Gyllenhaal's character was so raw and intense. And he... You know, there's references in the movie that Jake had this... His character's past was shady. And he was a piece of shit because of it. I don't really know what... I couldn't really surmise what that might have been. I think he had army training. And... Um, so something happened, or he was in the military, and he had issues back then. I don't really know what it is, and I can't think of what it probably was. I don't know. The, there was just something with Anna Kendrick that wasn't enough. Maybe maybe I'm looking at it from a superficial point of view. Maybe she wasn't good-looking enough for Jake Jones. Like, let's face it. Without his stupid muff beard that Joan Hall walks around with constantly, he's quite the heartthrob. Like, as a straightest guy I know... I can look at him and be like, that guy could crush anybody. Could just, whoever he goes after, he's going to get them. Princess of Zimbabwe, boom, he's got her. Um, so yeah, the, uh, and just the personality that Anna Kendrick kind of brought, I just, it wasn't enough for me. But that's nitpicky. She's the only thing that kind of bugged me about that movie. Um... You know, the training in this movie was amazing. There's just a lot of movements and a lot of stances and stuff that, you know, Michael and Jake did in this movie that you're just like, all right, they either trained for a while or they're just really good mimickers. There's something about it. They just looked and felt like cops. They could kick in a door. They they would walk around properly. Like, everything felt right. Um. So, yeah, so that's this part of the movie. Um, there's a lot of, there's actually a lot of hilarious moments too, which is great. And there's a lot of riffing back and forth with other cops and it's not bad boys two level of riffing where you're just like, really, how are, how is anyone a cop in Miami doing this? Um, but yeah, it's great. Uh, there's great dialogue between Jake and Michael. And it was, I was surprised to know a lot of it actually wasn't improvised. There were scenes here and there that were improvised, but Gyllenhaal was saying in an interview that, you know, 90% of what they said was written. So I thought that was really cool, and it really, um, you know, I give a lot of credit to the writer for that. So I'm going to go into spoilers. <laughs> Spoiler territory, so if you don't want to know the ending to this movie, turn it off, turn it off. All right, just don't listen. That's what you got to do. All right, so I'm in spoiler territory right now. Um, so the ending, the ending is interesting. 
if you haven't seen the movie and you wanted to listen to the spoiler, I don't know why you would do that. I would rather you go see the movie and turn this off right now. No, don't turn it off. Well, you should turn it off. But, so the ending, uh, there's a great scene. It's a great shootout, a great confrontation between the cops, Jake Gyllenhaal and Michael Pena's characters, where they come face to face with the cartel that pretty much put a hit out on them because they're getting, you know, they're just getting a little too close. You know what I'm saying? Loose lips, sink ships, that type of deal. They should keep their nose clean. But yeah, so they're getting a little close. So the cartel t- tries to take them out. And essentially, they do. Or you're left to believe that they do. There's a great moment in the end of the film where Jake is shot first. And Michael's holding him. And it's the typical Tropic Thunder scene, you know, where... He's crying and he shouts out, Mendoza! No, no, no Mendoza. But it's a great moment and you really feel for it and they really do it right, even though it's a cliche moment. It's great. And then they surround both of them while Michael's holding Jake and the cartel with their AK-47s, which I believe are illegal now. So had this movie been made now... Uh, those criminals would have to abide by federal law and not be allowed to carry those assault rifles. So we'd have a very different film on our hands. But anyway, uh, yeah, so they lay in bullet after bullet into Michael Pena. He, it's a great heroic but realistic moment. Michael tries to pull out a gun and shoot him down. And I think he gets off like a couple shots and then boom, 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 boom. He's down and he's dead. And when you watch it, you thought both were dead. You thought bullets surely must have went through him into Jake too and it would have been bad. And then they're walking away feeling all good. It boggles my mind that they don't try and get away faster, but they're fucked up, like whatever. And uh, this car- the cartel I'm talking about. And then the LAPD roll up and they lay waste to them and cartel's dead too. And so then smash cut to this dramatic cop funeral uh which was well done and we find out that the white guy lives and the mexican does not and it's great like i remember i i've seen the movie twice now and i tear up every time at that ending like it's very it's a very emotional moment and they handle it very well but i pose this question to you audience do you think the original intent was for both of them to die because i think it was i think they i think the original cut had them both die and i think there was a problem somewhere with audiences or dare i say ladies who were upset that their little jilly hall perished so they shot a new ending I should have looked this up before I just started talking out of my ass, but I believe that could have been a factor. And because of that, it kind of bugs me that that happens. Not only that, but I almost like there's a f- level of racism that bugs me. And obviously it's subtle and it's not worth getting mad about, but it's just like the white guy has to live again. <laughs> you know, it's like if you had to call it, the white guy is going to win. Even in a movie with predominantly Latin characters, the white guy has to win, and or you know, will win, live, whatever. And we have, and you know, we feel sorry for the Mexican, obviously, because it's a very sad moment. But it's just, I don't know. It's something to think about whenever you watch these things. It's, and I try not to be conscious of it, but you know, it's just. At the end of the day, you're like, oh, this is just Jake's story. Because I guess as you go along, I guess it is pretty much Jake's character's story. But you feel so connected to Michael as well that you just feel it's like a buddy-buddy thing. But ultimately, you know, the cameras are Jake's. Because if you haven't seen the movie, the way um, this whole found footage thing starts is that uh, Jake Gyllenhaal is in school for law and he had to take an elective and he takes a film program so he decides to carry cameras with him everywhere he goes and that's how we get 
you know, the majority of the found footage that we're seeing. Although it, it's interesting to me because when they switch back to conventional, where it's like, okay, you're not watching this from any sort of digital camera that any of the characters have on them. You're just watching this, you know, somebody, uh, a director filming something. The footage isn't that much better. Like you're supposed to have, there's supposed to be a drop off, right? Like it's supposed to be, I'm trying to think of like what movie kind of shows that off good. But, you know, you have something on a film camera, for instance, you know, with long lenses, nice shots and everything. And then you go to whatever camera they're holding. And there's supposed to be a drop off where it looks a lot more digital. It looks, you know, the angles are worse and terrible and everything. But (laughs) it's weird. There's no real drop off. You're like, all right, the director isn't even that much better of a cinematographer than because and I know that Jake Gyllenhaal was walking around with the camera most of the time most of the movie footage that we end up watching Jake Gyllenhaal was a cinematographer because he was holding the camera or doing whatever or Muggle Pina was holding it as well so I just thought that was interesting that there wasn't really it was almost hard to tell and maybe he did that intentionally maybe you kind of wanted he wanted you to be confused uh, what was found footage and what was just him pointing a camera, the director, I mean, and that way, you know, you wouldn't really know the difference and it wouldn't jar you out of it. Kind of like when you watch Batman, sorry, not Batman, uh, the dark Knight and the dark Knight rises and they go from IMAX to 35 IMAX, 35 IMAX. And it's just like, you know, big, small, big, small, big cropped. Full cropped. Full cropped. And can be a little jarring. I still love those movies though. But anyway. So that's enough about End of Watch. Go see it. Check it out. Let me know what you think. I think it was one of the most underrated movies of the year. I don't really know a lot of people that have seen it. And I hope more people see it. And hopefully you go see it because of this review. And hopefully you didn't listen to the spoilers. And I didn't ruin a great cinematic experience for you. Um, So yeah. That's it. Thanks for listening. And we'll... I'll probably have a a new one on soon. I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll do Broken City. I just saw Broken City. So, yeah, stay tuned for Broken City. And I'm out.